It's the biggest week in football. The Super Bowl is happening in Las Vegas. The San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. We talk high school football here. But one of the stars of the game, quarterback Brock Purdy for the Niners, is a homegrown boy right here from Perry High School. Welcome into Bleacher Talk. I'm Jordan Spurgeon. So we're going all in on Brock Purdy. If you've seen our shows all this week, the Brad Sessment Football AZ show, we looked to, took a look back at a lot of the things Brock Purdy did over the years at Perry and Iowa State. Brad Sessment caught up with his parents, his siblings. So there's a lot there. You can go over to our website. You can check out the show throughout the week and see all of that. But this week, we're going to take a few more angles. Taylor Mauser, Iowa State was one of the assistant recruiting directors at the time Brock Purdy was there, now an assistant coach, tight ends coach. So he was the one that really got Brock Purdy his first offer, which was to Iowa State, and then eventually goes on to get Alabama and a bunch of other schools. But because of Taylor Mauser, because of Matt Campbell, Brock Purdy went to Iowa State. So we're going to catch up with Taylor Mauser to talk about that, talk about AZ high school football recruiting because he does recruit here in the state heavily. So we're going to talk with him. For a few minutes. And then last week, I caught up with Dan Minucci, quarterback guru. He's over on Fox Sports 910, played in the NFL. He was Brock's quarterback's coach, still is Brock's quarterback coach at times in the offseason as well. So we're going to replay some of the best moments from last week with Dan Minucci, just talking about the things he saw in Brock, even as a little tiny ninth grader, and how he's not truly surprised that he's in this moment, regardless of how big it may feel. That's all coming up on Bleacher Talk. But for now, here's my conversation with Taylor Mauser. I'm joined now by Taylor Mauser, the assistant head coach, tight ends coach over at Iowa State, Basha High alum as well. So from the Valley, we're going to talk about, you know, one of the guys that you got to recruit who's getting ready to play in the biggest game of his life. But before then, I want to give people some context. You graduate from Basha High School. How does your scouting and coaching career begin from there? Yeah, so I, I graduated from Basha High School in 2009. I played for Tim McBurney at Basha, who uh, him and a, a D-line coach, Richard Gray, really helped me fall in love with football. And uh, I was lucky enough to go from there. I played at a D2 school, uh, Adams State University in Colorado, and played there for four and a half years and then wanted to get into coaching. And really, I uh, I had sent my, you know, information and resume and all that stuff to pretty much every uh, Division One, you know, Division FCS, whatever, one double A at the time, and uh, reached out to a lot of schools. And the only school that that hit me back was Coach Campbell at the University of Toledo, who's our head coach now at Iowa State. And told me I had a chance to go out there as like an intern guy, and if I did the right things and a spot opened, and I showed I could handle it, that they hired me as a graduate assistant. So, uh, in between being a GA and a spot I'm at now, I was in charge of all of our offensive recruiting. And uh, I'm in charge of recruiting Arizona now and, and Colorado are my two areas. So uh, wanted to – I couldn't get Coach Campbell to recruit uh, Arizona at Toledo, but when we got out here and there was direct flights, it, it made things a little bit easier. And he uh, bought into the vision that I had to recruit Arizona. And that's kind of, you know, in, in a nutshell, how it all kind of unfolded in a, in a fast version. So you guys are at that point now with Arizona athletes and – it kind of started with Brock Purdy then, right? I mean, he's yeah. now the guy that a lot of people are going to kind of push in that direction that came out of Arizona. What was it like when you got the chance to get to know him and maybe were kind of fighting to, to get him to come? What was that process like the way you remember it? Yeah, it was it was really crazy. And I, I've known uh, Preston Jones, Coach Jones at Perry for a little while back when he was uh, the head coach at Highland. We played against him at uh, Basha in the playoffs and beat them. And he had been reaching out to me about Brock. And uh, at the time we weren't gonna sign another quarterback, but I told him like, he's the only other quarterback on our board right now. If we need another quarterback, you know, he's the guy. After our bowl game, we just, we had won the Liberty Bowl. Our first day back, Coach Campbell comes up to me and he's like, we need to sign a, a quarterback, who do you have? And the first person I showed him was Brock Purdy. And um, he, I don't know what I expected, but he fell in love with Brock's film. Like he couldn't believe he thought he said this kid's the next Baker Mayfield is what he said at the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking that Coach Campbell was kind of was, you know, out of his mind, as good <laughs> as I thought Brock was. But right after that, we got Coach Jones on the phone and talked to Coach Jones and he couldn't say enough good things about Brock. And I talked to Brock and Coach Campbell talked to Brock. We offered him a scholarship and he didn't really have anything at the time. 
and uh, did a home visit, got him scheduled on an official visit. He came up that weekend and it was really good. And um, we flew out the next week to do our second and last home visit and walking out the door, like we felt really good about, we were gonna get Brock and he got like Alabama as we were like walking out the door. And I'm like, this is gonna get, this is gonna get nuts. And uh, we were lucky enough to show him what makes Iowa State, Iowa State and Coach Campbell so special. And There's a little more I want to touch on with him, but you, you said something that I've learned in my four years out in Arizona, and it's slowly adjusting here. You're an Arizona boy, so you might understand this as well, but the importance of being the first, and especially when you're a program in a big conference, and you're first before even the schools that are basically right down the street from them are offering them. Like in Brock's situation, ASU hadn't yeah. looked at him yet. And you guys no. were first. He gets all the big schools after. But how important do you think it is to be the first one for some of these guys because they see the love that you give and they're going to reciprocate it by potentially going there? Because I see a lot of guys, it's usually the first school that gives them love. The, they just continue. As long as that connection was there, they continue and one end up going there. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's huge. And we had Brees Hall was the class after Brock and we were his first offer. And I think that was how we were able to beat out some pretty big schools with him and so I think being first with him and getting him on the phone with Coach Campbell and those two just had such good chemistry, like out of the gate with uh, what they their envision for, you know, Brock was and what Brock's, in, you know, vision for his college experience was. And they were able to just build so much trust so fast. I think that really helped us, you know, stay in the lead there. But, you know, if we're not as early as we are, I certainly don't think that, you know, that puts us in the spot to get him and, be able to get in front of, you know, his mom and dad and family and show them just what makes Iowa State so special here is, you know, the the people. And so you get him there, you get him on campus, and then the next four years, it's 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 quite a journey. When the time was up there with Brock, what were your expectations? What did you think he would become? Because if anyone said he's gonna go on and be in a Super Bowl a second year, he gets a starting job, I don't think anyone would have saw that. That's too difficult to predict, but did you see what, what everybody sees now and the fact that he was going to be an NFL starter regardless of where he went potentially? Yeah, I, I think we did. At least like you said, with me being from Arizona, I knew uh, with what he and Coach Jones did, you know, taking Perry to those state championship games, like it was, it hadn't been done before. They went up the rough side of the mountain. So he had, he and had taken that team as far as they could go. So he he's a winner and he's a competitor. And then before he even got out here, like, and I was going back home for spring break. I was taking uh, laptops back and, you know, him and I were eating Los Favoritos breakfast burritos and, you know, going through the install before, you know, he even got up there in June. So the kid was just thirsty for for knowledge and wanted to learn and wanted to grow and uh, wanted to come in and compete. He found a way to get the ball to bounce our way like I've never seen. And he had a way to draw everybody together and get everybody to buy in coaches teammates like he's just got this incredible energy about him and you just knew that kid was special and even when you watch his career and there's like the you see you hear the people that troll him all the time they find like the bad clips but almost every single time after one of those clips like he comes back and like leads a touchdown drive when I know I don't have you know a lot of kids don't have the ability to come and overcome adversity like him so he's so grounded he knows exactly who he is and what he wants to be and he's just not phased by a lot of the things that most people are. So, you know, coming after his senior year, I knew that he had a chance, given the opportunity to just go and outwork people and be really special with the right fit. And it worked out. So what what can others learn? Like, is he a story that you're, when you're sitting in someone's living room, a family's living room, are you telling a little bit about that story when you're recruiting guys or just in general, is there things guys should learn because he was late and now that's becoming more and more common for high school guys because of the transfer portal, because I'm never going to blame a coaching staff for taking a 20, 21 year old over an 18 year old. That's, it's just, you know, that's how the game is played now, but there are a lot of guys that have to be a little more patient now. So if you're coming into someone's living room, are you having discussions about stories like that, that kind of show you that as long as you find the right place, you can still succeed. Absolutely. We talk about it all the time here and you see just with recruiting now, like so many kids, see what's going on social media doesn't help it at all either and all these kids are chasing like seven on seven leagues and they're going to all these camps and which is good too you know but 
I think still working with your high school teammates towards having like an incredible senior year and a great experience because like for us as football coaches like that's what we want to see and at least at Iowa State like we're not people that are going to live in the transfer portal. You're a Basher High alum and they've had a lot of success recently. They've been one of the top yeah. three, four teams in the state in the last few years. Chris McDonald has, has it cooking. Do you uh, get a chance to pay attention over there? You got to go with them. I'm uh, I'm upset. I mean, I don't want to get in trouble with the other coaches there because I love them, but <laughs> I love Coach McDonald, man. That guy's awesome. We signed a, a running back, Dylan Lee, from uh, Williamsfield out there. We went and did, you know, before we did the home visit, I took Coach Campbell to meet Coach McDonald. And, I have so much respect for what he's done with that program. The kids are awesome. They work hard. Last thing I got for you too, and, and this applies to Basher because they have guys, they played on national landscape. They've got, you know, all this talent all over, but really all over the state, there, there's so much now. What do you think of the AZ versus everybody? You're recruiting these guys. You're seeing just the talent over here. Talent wise is, I, I certainly think it's there. You see a lot of those schools, they go play nationally and they either beat, you know, teams from these powerhouse states or they're right in it with, with teams and they're not afraid to go compete versus anybody and to watch like how much the states got recruited since I was there like it's uh it's insane and the the coaches do an incredible job of showcasing the kids are always available and the high school football coaches in Arizona need to get paid more money so I don't I'm a, however I can help that movement <laughs> pay the high school football coaches in Arizona more money because they're great football coaches the football is great uh, I can't say enough about how good the, the football is in Arizona. I certainly think it's on par with any state in the country. I'll take the best kids from Arizona and put them against anybody. And I bet you they turn out pretty good. So I'm I'm very much impressed and, and think that Arizona high school football is on par with anybody. Custom ordering is at Santan Ford. Colors, wheels, trims, performance packages, and more from the factory right to your driveway. And you can even track your custom Ford every step of the way. We are Santan Ford. It's spring, so come for the games and have a ball in Arizona. Ready to go big? Plan your getaway today. Bienvenidos. Here in the heart of the American Southwest, you'll find three well-known restaurants all named Valle Luna, serving the finest Sonoran-style Mexican food known across the country and beyond. And we're open for business, so come on in. We've fired up the grill and iced down the refreshments and even added some specialties along the way. Thanks for coming. Hello, greetings. Welcome back. No matter where you're from or how you say it, at Valle Luna, you're always welcome. And we're glad to have you back. Discover more Play for All at Harrah's Auk Chin Casino. Hi, folks. What are you your drink? Where having fun means racking up reward credits with the Caesars Rewards Loyalty Program that can be redeemed for food, free play, hotel stays, and more. Not only here in the city of Maricopa, but also at more than 50 Caesars properties coast to coast. From Harrah's Las Vegas, the Caesars Palace in Atlantic City. What are you waiting for? Play for all at Harris Auction Casino, the official sponsor of play. When you get 
a home loan from Desert Financial, you're not just getting a mortgage. You get a mortgage. You'll get more competitive rates, more local servicing of your loan. We even offer a closing guarantee on select loans. And because more is better, get up to $5,000 closing cost credit when you use a participating real estate broker. At Desert Financial, we don't just do mortgages. We do mortgages. Click, call, or come in for more information on our great rates, local servicing, and how you can qualify for a closing cost credit of up to $5,000. Here with Dan Minucci now, and we'll get right into it. You see the hat, see the shirt, all of that. Dan, you've worked with Brock Purdy since the ninth grade. You see him here now. He's in the big game, heading to Las Vegas with the Niners. What's the last, you know, I guess at least the few weeks have been like, but I'm sure these first two years of his career have just been something remarkable for you, right? You know what, Jordan, uh, just been incredible. I mean, just I've loved watching this young man grow, uh, first and foremost, as a young man. And second of all, as a quarterback, and just the way he's handled everything with poise and confidence and and humility, probably more than anything, Jordan, he's just handled it just one day at a time, um, team first. Um, he's a very faithful man, gives glory to God uh, each and every time he has a chance to, to have that pulpit, if you will, and that platform to uh, share his faith. And I think more than anything, I, I think America – and see what kind of uh, individual he is, not only on the field and off the field, but I'm really proud of him, the way that they went through that three-game skid during the season, how he just kind of kept the team together, rallied the troops, learned from his mistakes, Jordan, and just kind of went, okay, that's the National Football League, the ups and downs you go through. That's what I'm really proud of him, in reference to kind of setting the tone and the team setting the tone as they headed into the playoffs this year. There's a lot there that I'd like to touch on. So when you saw him, you know, all the way back in ninth grade, I'm not going to necessarily ask if you ever saw this for him. I think that's hard to predict in anything, but were those traits there? Like, was he someone that was so confident in his faith, confident in his ability on the field, confident in who he was as a young man? Or is that something you're really just seeing kind of blossom more and more every day? Like, well, how do you see Jordan, that? A lot of people ask that. The number one thing, he, he always had that confidence. He was always very even killed. He had the confidence. He worked hard. He always worked hard. And the one thing about Brock, and, and I shared, I talked to his dad about this, Sean Purdy. I said, look, the kid is an old soul. He's mature beyond his years. Uh, he's very focused. He's bound and determined, but in a very humble way, if you will. And every time he came home, whether it was uh, in the off season in high school or in college when he come home from Iowa State, or the times he would come home, excuse me, uh, prior to the draft, and then after the draft with our workouts, he got better and better and better. Uh, His accuracy, he and Chubba, his brother Chubba Purdy, have always been extremely accurate. It was just a matter of getting the footwork down, getting the the kind of throws he's going to have to make at the next level down, and trying to help him to understand uh, what he's going to be going through at the pro level. So he was always receptive, always working, always wanting to get better. But the biggest thing was knowledge, wanting to know where to put the ball, what he's going to face, and then kind of gearing him up and ramping him up to play the kind of speed that he's playing with in San Francisco. Speaking of speed, too, I know a lot of the discourse last week was, wait, Brock Purdy can can run? He's an athlete? I mean, he's been that since high school. It's before my time here, but I've seen the highlights. We have the highlights up right now. And um, that's a part of his game that I'm sure you've worked a lot on with him, but he's, he's a sneaky athlete. And you know, I think uh, as part of, you know, the modern quarterback, there really aren't many quarterbacks that can't move anymore. But are you surprised that people haven't noticed that through his, you know, first two years in the league? And it kind of took well, last week even to see that. And I've talked to a couple of people about that. He hasn't really had to show that yet. But he, we've seen that in high school, his elusiveness, his escapability. Uh, he's sneaky quick, I guess is the term. Um, he can run. He can move. He can throw on the run. 
And for me and a lot of people that have watched him over the years, he's always had that. Mm -hmm. It's just now he's put it on the map and he's put it on a full-time display on a national view. Or I should say international view. <laughs> Last thing on Brock too, and then I want to touch on some things that you do and, and catch up a little bit. But, you know, we hear a lot about the it factor with certain guys. And that's thrown around a lot with him now, along with game manager. The team's having fun with that. I think it's hilarious. I'm glad Brock's kind of making light of that. How do you kind of describe or summarize that it factor? Because I feel like everyone has a different description. and he kind of fits that general mold of it, it seems like. You know what? The it factor to me means a, a guy that produces at the right time. Mm -hmm. And I think we've seen Brock produce these last two playoff games in the right time. And when I say it factor, it's, it's a person or athlete that never gets discouraged, never gets down, um, always finishes strong, always bounces back. And that kind of describes what Brock Purdy is all about. I mean, here they are down by 17 points in that, that championship game and never lost his poise, um, pretty much knew he could get the job done and, and knows he has to get the job done. And that's the other thing. When the weight's on your shoulder and people say he's got the it factor, it also means that he can get it done at the right time and also that that team is, is looking to him to lead them on. So the it factor is a combination of things. But more importantly, uh, the it factor, as far as I'm concerned in sports, is that Brock Purdy's a winner. He's a winner. He's bound and determined to win no matter how much he's down or up. He keeps his poise. He keeps his composure. Uh, doesn't get rattled, even if he has a turnover, but understands what he has to get done during those moments. So I hopefully, for me, that's the it factor, the way I look at it, and the way I look at Brock Purdy and his it factor that he has in staying. And, and next to that it factor is it backslash confidence, which he definitely has. Inspiration is closer than you think. Come visit Burj Mazda during the Season of Inspiration sales event. Now's the time to go past ordinary. Drive a Mazda CX-5 with 0% financing up to 60 months on all trims. Get a Mazda CX-30 Turbo or a Mazda CX-50. Save with 1.9% financing up to 60 months. Or get a Mazda CX-90 with 2.9% financing up to 60 months. The third row SUV to fit your lifestyle. They're all here at Burj Mazda during the Season of Inspiration. Baseline and Country Club and BurjMazda.com. Let's talk about Venezia's Pizzeria, New York style pizza. Oh man, this looks so good. Pizza doughs made fresh daily, wings, subs, sandwiches, pasta. They cater, they deliver. They have five alley locations. Venezia's New York style pizzeria.
Welcome back to Bleacher Talk. Before we get out of here, listen, the biggest game in football is here this weekend. And Brock Purdy, I know some of you are probably sick of it being beat down your throat here in Arizona, but you have to love the story. And for all the kids and all the families right now that are watching, that's somebody you can look up to because there are going to come times where you're going to face adversity. You may be a kid right now. You finished your senior season. You don't have the offers you think you have. Maybe you're just now starting to get those offers. You can see that just because guys in your class already committed, or maybe you're already even on campus as early enrollees and you don't have anything signed to paper yet, that you're way behind the eight ball. And that's just not true. There are so many opportunities to play at the next level and even the level beyond that and be playing on Sundays. You just have to put in the work. You have to find the right fit. They're going to come find you as well. If your tape is good enough, if your grades are good enough, if your character is good enough, they're going to come find you. You will have those opportunities. And maybe you have to get creative. Maybe, I know I talked a lot about this in a rant last week, but maybe you got to go to a JUCO. Maybe you got to go find a small school. Maybe you got to go be a walk-on. But if you can play, you have all the traits, the character, the grades, everything. You can make it happen. Brock Purdy is the prime example of that. And we're not supposed to root for teams or root for outcomes of games here in the media. But I think it's safe to say a majority of us are rooting for the San Francisco 49ers this weekend because Brock Purdy is second year in the NFL, Perry High School alum. He deserves to win a championship. But we'll see how the game plays out. That's all I've got. I'm Jordan Spurgeon. Thank you so much for joining us on Bleacher Talk. We'll see you again next week. We got them at Santan Ford. From the latest all-electrics to the most rugged 4x4s and America's best-selling truck. We are Santan Ford. Bienvenidos. Here in the heart of the American Southwest, you'll find three well-known restaurants all named Valle Luna, serving the finest Sonoran-style Mexican food known across the country and beyond. And we're open for business, so come on in. We've fired up the grill and iced down the refreshments and even added some specialties along the way. Thanks for coming. Hello, greetings. Welcome back. No matter where you're from or how you say it, at Valle Luna, you're always welcome. And we're glad to have you back. It's spring. So come for the games and have a ball in Arizona. Ready to go big? Plan your getaway today. Visit us at Harris Ock Chin Casino in the city of Maricopa, where you'll find play for all and friendly people ready to welcome you like family. Welcome back, you two. As the official sponsor of play and the only casino in Arizona with Caesars Rewards, see what a difference it makes to play where your fun is our top priority. Harris Ock Chin Casino. Play for all.